Good morning, I'm Sally Barker. Welcome to Local Business Focus. Joining me this morning is Peter Treneman from Group Support, proud station sponsor. Good morning, Peter. Morning, Sally. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Excellent. Now, today we're talking about data and data entry and how important it is to streamline the process for your business. Absolutely. And um, uh, let me first say that any advice I give you, any advice I offer, um, is general only. Um, your local IT expert will, um, will um, fine-tune anything for you personally or for your business um, so it suits you because what I say now may not suit your business specifically. So always, um, always listen carefully and take the advice but uh, make sure that you seek, your, um, seek advice and um, uh, expert opinion from your local IT person. We spoke about that some time ago, um, having a local IT person on site who understands you, you communicate well, and you speak regularly. Um, and that way you can get good advice and um, make sure your business is on track. So today we're talking about data. Um, everybody has it and everybody uses it. Um, you'd be surprised um, how many people mess it up. Okay, now really? as I, <laughs> I explained to you off air um, uh, what single point of entry is. Now, single point of entry is having some information that you're entering in your business and only entering it once. Um, there's many people who um, have a customer name and address. Um, that customer name and address has to be entered once for the accounts, once for the invoice, once for an invitation, once for an email, uh, and on and on and on. Okay. Every time you um, every time you enter a piece of information, the possibility of an error occurring increases. Now, some say it's somewhere between five and ten percent, but even if it's one percent you get to 10 times, and that's 10%. Now, if you want to be really mathematical about it and accumulate that, that works out as 22%. You know, yeah. So that's one in five chance it'll go wrong, yeah. which means that Mr. Smith from Fremantle Street will be Mr. Fremantle from Smith Street or something. You yeah. won't be able to find him. No. Or he'll get offended and walk away. And in these days, this day and age where customer service is so essential, You've got to make it easy for customers and you've got to make it easy for your staff to actually relate to the customer. You know? Now, I think that was one of the best um, pieces of business advice I had when I was a young manager in retail years and years and years ago before we had computers dealing yes. with all this sort of stuff. Yes. He said, if you have to pick up a piece of paper more than once, it needs to go in the bin. That's right. That's it. And um, it's important to have pieces of paper that um, you may need to pick up more than once. But if you have to enter the data off it, if it's a tool, I mean, in my business, um, I have an IT company in Belmont, we have eight staff, um, and we use a piece of paper that goes around the office to follow a piece of stock. You know, when we're doing things with it, whether adding RAM, adding hard drives, it's a description of what needs to happen. It's entered once, and it's the record in the electronic system, but the piece of paper is useful to identify a piece of hardware that's sitting on a bench, because a piece of paper is stuck to the actual item, and you can't replicate that. So sometimes you do need a piece of paper, um, but having to enter it more than once is the issue, and that's what I'm on about. Um, when you're entering it into a database, um, there are some databases that won't take everything. They won't take stock, or they'll only take invoices. They'll only take events from uh, invitations from events, but they won't take the money from that event. So you've got all these attendees to an event, you don't know whether they've paid or not. So is that something important when you are looking at a system is to Absolutely. see, you know, do, do people get caught out by putting a system in place and realising it's not really what they need? Well, a lot of people, um, there's two sides of, of that coin. Um, the people who actually go out and look for it and look for something that is efficient, that they only have to enter once, know what they've got. They've got a, um, a list of the, the needs and the requirements of their business. Um, and they choose a piece of software based upon the price of the software and the performance. The functionality and the functionality could include everything they need there's a sacrifice line where they don't want to pay the money for the software so if you have a piece of software that costs ten thousand dollars and a piece of software that costs a hundred dollars and the hundred dollar one means you have to have one excel spreadsheet then you'll accept the one hour excel spreadsheet solution because it only costs a hundred dollars but if you're talking about two and a half and three thousand dollars as the two pieces of software that's when you need to really make really make your decision. Now a lot of people get caught out because they go for something cheap and they don't have a full list of um, requirements for their business. So they end up with all these other spreadsheets 
And they think that's normal. Um, the job we have, and the uh, as an IT expert, your local IT provider, the person who is your consultant, your expert, we should be able to see that and notice that you're being wasteful with your time, you're being inefficient. And when you do that, you lose money. Um, we have a, a, a classic example of a, of a client of mine who's called Frank. In, in fact, all my clients who I tell other people about are called Frank. Frank's a good name. Um, so Frank has got a staff member who uh, entered the same data three times every day, okay, in three different systems. So um, I can't mention the brand of the software, um, but it was cheap and it's a, um, it looks after their finance. Uh, they went entered one into the stock level, into the stock items, uh, closed that piece of software, opened another piece of software to enter the invoice, and then closed that piece of software and entered it on an Excel spreadsheet so that she could match the two items up, the stock and the invoice. And then every month they'd sit down and go through this Excel spreadsheet and take them a day and work out which ones were invoiced and which ones weren't. Okay, we're currently rolling out the system for them uh, where it's all in one place. And uh, the lady is saving half a day, every day, where she's now ringing clients, being more proactive on the phone, talking about stock placement, the amount of stock. She's noticing trends in increases and decreases in what's happening on in the warehouse. And as the third party consolidated warehouse and a distribution point, it's important to maintain that client satisfaction level, to maintain prompt attention and a smooth transition in the warehouse. And their business is actually booming as a result of spending a little bit more money on their accounting solution. Well, you could say that they're actually saving money because it's <laughs> a little bit more streamlined, the process. I, I couldn't agree with you more, but trying to get people that, to, to understand that you're saving money and making money, that's the thing. Making money by spending more is a, sometimes a little bit of a, an uphill battle. Well, freeing up that time for yes. someone to be working on something else is important. People don't count time as being expensive unless it's theirs and they want to do something else mm -hmm. or unless they have to pay for it. And it's only when you start having to account for paying for it, you know, someone will say, I've got the staff member, they're there a week. I don't, it's a fixed cost. I don't have to do any more. But that's the point is, what else could they be doing in that time? Exactly, like you just mentioned with Frank. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> it's, it's easy. You're all my clients are Frank. Um, yeah, so um, we have that discussion with many people many times a day um, all across Australia, and the solution is basically the same, to review what they do, to make efficiencies, to identify where duplicates are happening, um, and to um, make a better system because a business is all about creating processes that are that are simple and then are repeatable. So do, do a mini audit on, on what you're doing. That's exactly it. It's an audit. It's exactly the thing. People think audit, people think pain, people think it'll cost lots of money. It doesn't necessarily have to. You know, it could be an hour. But if you've got a local guy, an IT guru who's alongside you, who's been talking with you and communicating you regularly for years, that conversation is a very short conversation because he should know. And if he doesn't, perhaps it's time to look at someone else. <laughs> perhaps it's time to find someone who does understand because you can outgrow things. You know, you outgrow your genes when you're small. You know, you need a bigger set of genes or a bigger shirt when you grow. Same with businesses. You know, you change your clothes. Why not change your experts if they can't do what they need to do? So when will a business know that they've outgrown their system? Because you did mention that people don't realise that it's not normal to be entering this data in three or four different times. Um, I'll speak about this in, in, in a later session, but essentially um, when the boss loses the, you know, the, the light at the end of the day, which is the game of golf once a month, or you know, they can't go on holidays over the weekends because they're working, that's the point. You know, what are you in business for? Are you in business to be under complete pressure all the time? But it creeps up on people. So sometimes it takes a friend and sometimes it takes um, a business partner, sometimes it takes a breakdown in something that's going wrong, you know, Any for point. someone to say something. So it's important for clients to look out for their suppliers, for customers to look out for the retailers that they buy things from and make suggestions, say, can you do that better? Or friends. And business friends are very important. Business friends are the ones that are 
most likely to notice those sort of things because they're the ones who are in it as well. They understand the pressures. Mm -hmm. um, but not everybody does and not everybody wants to. You know, some people don't want other people's advice. Yeah. So if I'd realised that I've outgrown my system yes, and I don't have a local IT guy, what should I be asking if I'm sort of ringing up Colt saying, I need your help? Okay. So the first thing you need to do is find someone you're comfortable talking with to get good advice. And my mantra to everybody, everybody under the sun, is to get good advice and if you need to, pay for it. Don't take advice that's free from friends or family because there's no investment for you and you won't listen to it. So find someone who's good. Ask around. Ask all your friends. And if you need to, go and have um, a dozen coffees with a dozen different people to find someone who's you gel with. Okay, make, it, make a difference though. They don't have to agree with you. You just have to be able to understand them. Okay. They have to be able to explain something to you that you don't understand and explain it well so that you do. That's the point. That's what you're looking for. You, if, you, if you find someone who agrees with you all the time, they're not a consultant. They're a friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, so the idea, um, and that won't be very good for your business. Um, so you're looking for a consultant first, for, for an IT guru, uh, an expert in the field. Then you go through create a list of all the things you do within your business. Make a list of all the things, every activity, everything you, every time you enter uh, some data, every time you need some data out of the system, um, every point of contact with the client and the supplier, make a list. And then go and find some software that'll do exactly that. Okay? And it might take you three months, it might take you six months. But there's a light at the end of the tunnel and you'll learn things along the way. You'll make better processes, you'll be growing. And if you've got something to cling on to, some hope at the end, then life will be better. It doesn't matter how bad it is, if you've got some hope at the end, life is better. I'm sorry, I'm waxing lyrical about philosophy here, not business. <laughs> no, no, that's fine because, there, there, as you said, there'll be lots of um, people out there who haven't heard of a single data entry system. No, no, no. no. But there's a, there's a couple of Australian um, pieces of software that have been around for 40 years um, that do all that. They do warehousing, stock control, job costing, real job costing, job costing, um, sales and and um, and uh, supplier invoices, um, purchasing, requisitions, payroll, you know, all that. And and there's single systems that do all that. They're modestly priced. They're cloud based or on premise. Um, they comply with the KPMG audit requirement, and not every accounting system in in Australia does. Um, Is that important? It's important to know that a staff member can't delete an invoice. Because a staff member, if a staff member can delete an invoice, they can create an invoice, take a cash payment, and then delete the invoice, and you won't know any difference. Right. Um, that accounts for a lot of fraud in Australia. Um, I don't know about anywhere else, but in Australia, there's a lot of people who suffer a lot of fraud like that. Um, yeah. Auditing and, and KPMG audit, auditing a system is only doing what I've just mentioned. The, client, the software says we can do this, KPMG ticks it off and says, yes, you can. Okay. You know, KPMG require an accounting system to be non-volatile, to be um, resolute, which means that if you have a transaction entered in the system, you have to reverse the transaction, which means it shows up on the logs. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. So if you make a mistake, and that's fine. Everybody makes mistakes. Mm. The important thing to do is if it's your business, don't make the mistake of being blind to the pain you're experiencing. Get out of the pain and enjoy the business. All right, and that's what we're all about, enjoying Absolutely. the business. So next week we'll talk about using your reports to make management easier. That's right. So thank you for joining us this morning on Local Business Focus. We've been speaking with Peter Treneman from Group Support, proud station sponsor. Thanks for having me.